Hello everyone, my name is Fox. We're going to show you how to replace the thermal compound on your GPD Win 2. I'm going to be using Gilid GC Extreme. Gelid, Gilid, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, I've been running this Heaven Benchmark for about 27 minutes right now, almost 30 minutes. It should be about burned in as much as it's going to get. You can see right now that we're at, we're at 85 degrees Celsius, 84 degrees Celsius, uh, and more, most importantly, you can see that we're at 10 watt. So I'll quickly go ahead and quit out of this. So 85 degrees Celsius is our top end. So that'll be our little benchmark to see if we can get under that. I was running that for 30 minutes at 10 watt at the lowest brightness. Uh, and so it's, it chunked off about 25% in 30 minutes. So that's like two hours at 10 watts at lowest brightness. So. Uh, that's something that you can probably anticipate. You probably, you know, with medium brightness, probably like an hour and a half at 10 watt. Seems about right, I'd say. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and quickly show you what my settings are. Additionally, I'm going to be doing another video just so that I can show you guys how to do overclocking and all that other good jazz. You can see right now that we're actually right in the graphics tab. And I've undervolted using adaptive voltage mo uh, mode. If you use static, uh, static is going to be something that you'll have to set in the BIOS itself. Static will also be a lot more strict. Adaptive kind of um, has a lot more play to it. The GPU will kind of flex that voltage, whereas if you set it to static, it will just be that le that much less. Um, my preference for you guys is to use uh, adaptive. If you're going to be using um, the Intel Intel XTU, you should be doing it incrementally. It you can, uh, in the settings, set it like per one, but doing it five, uh, five thousandths of a, a volt is fine. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's that's my GPU settings. And in the CPU settings, you can see that I'm also uh, negative 0 0.07 volt. Okay, and you can see right here that I have both of these set to 10 watt, and I have Turbo Boost Power Time Window set to 128 seconds, which is only available by doing it in the BIOS itself. And when you do it like this, it's pretty much infinite. You saw that it was 10 watts, and that was running for 30 minutes. Um, I don't know, it doesn't give us time here. Does it, does it show longer? 30 minutes, does it show one hour? It shouldn't show an hour, right? Yeah, so you can see right here, this is a time frame of one hour. And obviously I was doing it, this is half of an hour. This is how long I was running the Heaven Benchmark. And you can see the package temperature right there. So we started off very low and slowly just kind of hovered around 84 degrees Celsius and topped out at 85 degrees Celsius uh, before we turned off the Heaven Benchmark. So that was about 30 minutes worth of testing, which I'll do again after we apply the thermal compound. Uh, so let's go ahead and shut this down as we have to ugh, restart it. I'll just shut down. Um, Again, we're just going to be taking off the seven screws, uh, eight if you include the SD. All of that has to be removed, and we're going to use this plastic spudger to go all around. This is a Q-tip. We're going to use a plastic spudger to go all around here. Uh, I'm not going to do that all over again. You can just look at my uh, how to replace the battery video, which I'll link in the description field to see a full teardown. So we'll just kind of jump ahead and take a look directly at the heatsink itself. Alrighty, so that's popped off and you can see right here is the heatsink. This is the new battery that I put in just recently and we'll go ahead and unscrew this and take out that little fan power cable thingamajig uh, connector plug, whatever you want to call it. And then see what's on, let's see what's underneath. Alrighty, so I've removed these two screws right here and they're slightly fatter than, than the ones that are hold the case together. Uh, let's go ahead and remove this cable. That comes out super easy. Okay, so that's out. Um, looks like there's two screws here as well. And then this one that's also holding it down. Let's see if this just parts. All right, so the fan comes out. Oh, okay, so the fan is all by its lonesome. And then, no, oh, look, it has fan direction and all that other jazz. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's the rabbit cage pushing out. Very nice. Okay, and it goes like that. Easy peasy. And how the screw holes line up, it's 
kind of super easy to make sure you get it in right. So we have one, two, three, four. Four screws look like and we're holding down this pretty neato heatsink. And look, it has an indentation for extra pressure. This is These are all good signs. So let's go ahead and remove this and see what's underneath. Okay, so this screw right here was really hard to get out. I don't know if we can see that in the video, if you can focus. I almost stripped this. So be careful when you're doing these and make sure you have the right bit when you're doing this. Also, this screw that is right here, this screw hole right here, there was no screw there. Uh, thankfully, all of these screws look to be the same size as the ones that hold in the case. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and use one of those to go in there. But I'll see how deep the threading is before I go. I don't know if it's not supposed to be there, but it seems like seems like it would be good to have more pressure on the heat plate altogether. So without further ado, let's see if we can take this out. All right. So there it is. Look at that. That's a nice heat plate. Look at that. It's bumped up. And then all this protection. This is really, really nice. And then there's also... Uh, it's curious. I don't know if there's kept on tape on there or not. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right, so I'm going to remove this thermal paste, which is on here. So it's nice that it's not a um, tape. So it's actually grease. So let's see if we can get uh, a little bit better performance out of using our own thermal thermal uh, material. All right, so that's the reason that that screw is not in there is because this mounting hole that's there is a little bit too thick for it. This is most likely just um, one of those things because I have a prototype case. I guarantee this is gonna be fixed on all the retail models. So you guys are gonna have uh, a fully screwed down unit, whereas mine doesn't have the best uh, amount of pressure on it. So uh, I would anticipate that everyone is probably gonna have better temps than me. Having said that, let's go ahead and clean this up and uh, get some new paste on it. Alrighty, so everything's all nicely cleaned. We used alcohol to polish right off. None of the thermal paste really stuck on there, so it was just easy to use uh, rubbing alcohol that came right off. And here's that 7Y30. Look at that sucker. Look at how nice this is. What's interesting is that this looks like all of these are memory chips, which is curious. But um, I thought they would have been singular instead of doubled up. So each one of those is two gigabytes. Is that right? But why does it show up as dual uh, dual channel? Right? Well, I mean, you know, it's fine, but I didn't think it took four sticks of memory. It seemed like it only could populate two by two. And it also shows two by two. So that's interesting. Maybe that's just how it is. Get a closer look at this. All right, so a little bit of dust on there. I have to clean that off. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put some thermal paste on there and then see what my temps look like. All right, so the thermal paste is now applied and the heat sink is back on again. Uh, this screw is still out because none of the screws fit it, so. I guarantee that this is just a prototype thing because this this uh, standoff probably the, the standoff that they used here is probably incorrect and they should have been using a different one or this standoff should have been over here or they just didn't have the screw for it. Um, I find that to be um, I don't think that's the case because all of these screws are basically the same the same size and shape. So I think the standoff here is probably going to get changed in the retail model. Alrighty, now it's time for the moment of truth. I have all of my settings back and still up. You can see we're at 40 degrees Celsius right now, but that doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and do the benchmark. Okay, so the benchmark just started. We're up to 67 degrees Celsius. Not too bad. Let's see what it looks like after 30 minutes. Alright, so as you can see, my temps have gotten worse. We're about 5 degrees Celsius, 6 degrees Celsius worse overall. Uh, where is my... there it is. Um, so there's a few feelings I have on that, and um, the paste job came out okay. It's just that I think... I mean, I could try a new paste, um, which I'll probably do first, but I almost feel like I should use something that will is uh, works as an epoxy. 
uh, to clamp it down because I don't like that I'm missing that one screw. I would like it to have a really nice tight seal uh, against the chip. So I think I actually might use uh, a curate epoxy. So once it's cured, it's going to be on there forever. Um, but I'm going to feel much better with that. Uh, having said that, uh, I think this is ultimately great news because you can see that they are that GBD is actually putting good thermal paste on the chip and also the retail units are most likely going to have that screw in there it's going to have better pressure uh it doesn't look like you'll actually need to do this um if you wanted to you totally can and you can totally use this guide um just to see how easy it is uh it is actually very very simple to open this up and get to the inside so um it's pretty much uh an easy job so i'm looking forward to going ahead and getting some epoxy and clamping that down, but uh, I'll uh, I'll let my my gillet cure a little bit. Although I don't think it's gonna get much better. Um, but yeah, that's how you can change the thermal paste on your GBU2, even though I don't think it's actually necessary. Thanks so much for watching.